Hey guys, today we're talking about the dreaded significant figures, okay? They're really not that bad. A lot of people say they're bad, but I got a few ways uh, to make this really, really simple. So what are significant figures? Significant figures are just numbers that matter in our end answer. In your final answer, you don't want to have unnecessary digits. You don't want to have an answer like 0 0.2, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. You only want to include the numbers that matter, okay? You don't want to over uh, state your numbers and you don't want to understate them, right? You don't want to be over specific and you don't want to be under specific. So significant figures help us figure that out. So what you need to be able to do is count uh, significant figures, okay? So significant figures, uh, anything that is a non-zero number is always going to be a significant figure. So I might ask you, how many significant figures are in this number 12? Well, anything that is a non-zero number, we got to count. So this number's not zero, and that number's not zero. So what I'm going to say is that this number has two significant figures, okay? Two sig figs, right? Uh, what about 5,322, okay? How many sig figs are in this guy? Four, okay? Four non-zero numbers, so four sig figs, okay? The tricky part is where we get zeros, okay? Zeros are really tricky. We gotta figure out when to count them or not. Let me give you a for sure when you're always going to count zeros, okay? You're always going to count zeros when they're trapped in between two non-zero numbers. So, something like 303, okay? Do we count that zero? The answer is yes. If it is trapped in between two non-zero numbers, we're going to count it. So I have one, two, three, six, six. Same if I had something like... Let's go 4 million and 4, okay? Those zeros, are they trapped in between two non-zero numbers? The answer is yes, they're trapped in between these two four. So I'm going to count all these zeros. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So I have seven significant figures, okay? So z we count everything that's a non-zero and we count zeros that are trapped in between non-zero numbers. Now, this is where things get confusing. Where we get into zeros that aren't trapped in between numbers, okay? And I got two easy rules for you to know whether or not to count sig figs, okay? But first I gotta explain my types of zeros. I have leading zeros and I have trailing zeros, okay? Well, what are those? Leading zeros. Those are zeros that are out in front, okay? Well, what does that look like in an actual number? Uh, it's going to look something like that, okay? They're zeros that are out in front of a non-zero number. So these guys are leading zeros, okay? Trailing zeros. Those are zeros that are at the end, okay? So something like... 4 million, okay? All these zeros here are trailing zeros. So as you can see, these are zeros that are not trapped in between two non-zero numbers. We got leading zeros, zeros out in front, and we got trailing zeros, okay? Zeros out in back. So here's my rules to know whether or not to count these zeros or not, okay? One, okay? Never count leading zeros. Okay, leading zeros are never going to count. So if we looked at my example up here in the leading zeros, none of these guys are significant. So right now I only have one sig fig. Okay, we're never going to count leading zeros. Don't ever count them. They're worthless. They're garbage. Okay, two, only count trailing zeros if there is a decimal in the number, 
Okay, so I'm never going to count trailing zeros either unless there's a decimal in the number somewhere. So if I look at my example up here, I got all these trailing zeros. Is there a decimal anywhere in this number? No. Okay, so I'm not going to count any of those zeros because there's no decimal there to make me count them, right? So here I also only have one sig fig. But guess what happens if I have the same number and I just have a decimal right there, okay? Well, I don't count trailing zeros unless there is a decimal. So should I count these zeros now? Yep, now I gotta count all these zeros. So now one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, six, six, okay? So, those are our rules, okay? That's what we're trying to figure out here, okay? So again, never count leading zeros, they're worthless. Two, only count trailing zeros if there's a decimal somewhere in the number, okay? So let's look at this. Let me give you a couple examples. Right, first example, let's go with Let's go with 0 0.0032, okay? Again, I look at this and I see some zeros and they're leading. Do I count leading zeros ever? No, so let's just put X's underneath those guys. Non-zero numbers, I always gotta count those, so my answer here is going to be two sig figs. Let's get a little bit more difficult. Okay. We got an interesting situation here, okay? We got leading zeros and trailing zeros. Well, remember, do we ever count those leading zeros? Nope, so let's just put X's under those right away. But, we're gonna count this five and six, but now I got these two trailing zeros, okay? Remember my rule, I only count trailing zeros if there's a decimal in the number. Is there a decimal in this number anywhere? Yep, there's a decimal. So do I count those trailing zeros? I sure do, okay? So I have four sig figs, okay? Let's try Okay, guys. Well, right off the bat, I know I'm counting my one and my seven because they're non-zeros, okay? What about these zeros here, okay? What did I say about zeros that are in between two non-zero numbers? We always count them. Zeros that are trapped in between two non-zero numbers, even though that's decimals there, I know that might be a little confusing, but any zeros trapped in between non-zero numbers, we gotta count them, okay? And then last but not least, I got this trailing zero right here, right? And again, we only count trailing zeros if there's a decimal in the number. So is there a decimal in the number? Yep, right there. So we count it and we got five sig figs, okay? So that is the basics of how you tell how many sig figs are in an answer. But now we gotta deal with some mathematics, okay? We're not just gonna be asking how many sig figs are a number. We're gonna be doing math with these guys and then we gotta figure out how many sig figs are gonna be in our answer at the end, okay? So, let's go with the most simplest of math. Let's go addition and subtraction, okay? So with addition and subtraction, there's a rule on how many sig figs we're gonna have in our final answer, okay? So if we're adding and subtracting in our final answer, okay? We focus on the number with the smallest amount of digits past the decimal. The 
the smallest amount of digits past the decimal. So I'm going to be thinking, I'm just looking at numbers past the decimal. I don't care about anything before, only numbers past the decimal. So my example, let's go with 8.43 and let's go with 8.2. So, I'm looking at this guy, and I'm only looking at the digits past the decimal, okay? So, in this number, how many digits are past the decimal? One, two, three, okay? How many are past this digit? One, two. And how many are past this decimal? One, okay? So, I look at these, I got three, two, and one. Well, what does that mean? Well, I look at the one that's the smallest, okay? So if my smallest number has one digit past the decimal, that's the smallest one, my answer is only gonna have one digit past the decimal, okay? So we look at the smallest amount of numbers past the decimal, my final answer better have that smallest number as well. So three sig figs, two sig figs, one sig fig, my answer is gonna have one sig fig. So I add all these up in my calculator and it gives me this long, drawn out answer of 25.262. Well, I gotta get closest to 25.262 with only one digit past the decimal. So, the closest I could get to 25.262, my option is either gonna be 25.2 or 25.3. Well, which one is closest? 25.3, okay? So when we add or subtract, we count up those numbers past the decimal. Our smallest one only had one digit past the decimal. So our, our smallest amount of digits past the decimal, that's what I mean by smallest, okay? So yes, this is the smallest number numerically, but I'm talking just about digits past the decimal, okay? So this guy only has one digit past the decimal, so our answer better have one digit past the decimal as well. Let's look at one more example. Let's look at, we got 28.3322 plus 28.334 plus 28.3332. these were minus signs, same rule applies, okay? There's no different. All right, I'm just doing addition, keeping it consistent, but if they were subtraction, same, same rule applies. So I look at the digits past the decimal. This guy's only got four digits past the decimal. This guy's only got three digits past the decimal. This guy's got five digits past the decimal. So what do I focus on? I focus on the smallest amount of digits past the decimal. This guy only has three digits past the decimal, so my answer is only gonna have three digits past the decimal. I add all these guys up, and I end up getting 84.99 and 933, okay? So, I have to get just three digits past the decimal, right? So my final answer is actually going to end up being 84.999. It's really close to that final answer. It's only got three digits past the decimal. So that is my answer. So let's go ahead. And let's focus on the next type of math we'll deal with, which is multiplication and division. Okay, multiplication and division, I think, is a little bit easier. And it actually deals with our sig fig rules that we dealt with. Okay, so with multiplication and division, uh, we focus on. on the number with the smallest amount 
of sick things. Okay, so in addition to subtraction, we just focused on the smallest number past the decimal, or smallest amount of numbers past the decimal. Here we're focusing on the smallest num the number with the smallest amount of sig figs. So we'll have an example such as 16.32 multiplied by 15.763. And then we're gonna divide those numbers by 1.3245, okay? So we got a situation here where now we're doing multiplication and division, okay? And we gotta figure out how many sig figs are gonna be in our final answer. Well, again, we just focus on the numbers and see which one has the smallest amount of sig figs. This guy has four sig figs, this guy has five sig figs, and this guy has five sig figs as well. So again, we focus on the smallest number. This number only had four sig figs, so my final answer is only going to have four sig figs. So I go ahead and I multiply all that out, and I get 194.22584. Well, again, my final answer we determined only is to have four sig figs. So it's going to be 194.2 is going to be my final answer. Okay, let's do one more example and then we are good to go on that. So let's go, I'll leave that there. And let's go, I have. 0 0.0032 times 45.600 and we'll do times 303. Okay, so again we have multiplication. So we're just focusing on which number has the smallest amount of sig figs. So, leading zeros. Do we ever count leading zeros? No. Okay, so this guy, he only has two sig figs. This guy, count that one, that one, and that one. Trailing zeros. We only count trailing zeros if there's a decimal in the number. Is there a decimal in this number? Yep, right there. So we gotta count these guys. And then this guy, 303, okay? Uh, it's got a zero, but it's trapped, right? In between two non-zero numbers, so we better count it. So I look at this, I look at my numbers, I count how many sig figs there are, and it looks like my final answer is only going to have two sig figs. So we go ahead and we type in 0 0.0032 times 45.600 times 303, and I ended up with a number of 44.21376. So that was my final answer in the calculator, but remember I can only have two sig figs. So if I were to simplify this to two sig figs, I would get the number 45.21376. So that is as in-depth as we're going to get with sig figs as far as multiplication and uh, addition and go and division and subtraction. Okay, there you go.